Hey everyone, welcome to the R Masterclass last project that we are going to build. So our last last project is Iris Dataset Visualization and Statistical Modeling. So in this, what we are going to do is we have Iris Dataset, and what we are going to do is basically do some visualization. We are going to look at some bivariant plots. We are going to look some at some multivariant plots. and we are going to do some box plots on to this histogram plots and then some uh, while while in plots and once we are done with it what we are going to do is we are going to create a statistical model um, and try to run on those data set so once we are done with it the next thing uh, we have to know about is uh, what is iris data set so basically iris data set is a data set which contains the data of this flower so iris have uh, data set basically have three three flowers uh, basically uh, that is setosa uh, versicolor and virginia so let me grab my pen and i could denote so basically what happened is iris uh, the iris data set basically iris data uh, is a flower species flower species which have three uh, categories that is setosa versicolor and virginia so these three are the species of this flower and basically uh this versicolor and virginia have some overlap in their stem length and stem uh, petal length so uh, and setosa is you could uh, almost is lesser than this versicolor and virginia so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to create a plot data visualization plot in which we are going to look at some histogram plots of this uh, plants length petal length petal uh, and uh, sepal length we are going to look at on to those and we are going to figure out okay what are the differentiators between those setosa versicolor and virginia so once we are done uh, we once we have get, got an idea okay what is iris basically i will repeat through iris is a flower species basically it contains three species setosa versicolor and virginia and versicolor and virginia have some overlap in their petal length and uh, sepal length that's make it a little bit uh, hard to detect which is versicolor or virginia so what are we going to do is so uh, we have this iris data set and uh, for lucky us that uh, our studio comes with pre built installed uh, library uh, and it already have iris data set so if you open our, uh, your r studio and type command data iris that we are going to look into in just few seconds uh, you will be able to get those data set so we don't have to load any data set and basically if you wonder how what are other data set it uh, asks to do come with it have uh, motorway vehicles also it comes with and lot of uh, other data it also comes uh, with but uh, we have to look on to only the iris and basically it contains 150 observation of iris flower from three species that is setosa versicolor and virginia and these each features observe, uh, observation includes four features that are sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so these are the four observation we have that we are going to do and uh, for each data set for example setosa there would be sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width for versicolor it would be we have sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and similarly for virginia virginica uh, we also have sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so we have got an idea okay iris data set contains 150 observation in this we have three iris uh, species which include uh, sorry we have three flowers that uh, iris species include that are setosa versicolor and virginia now we have go, uh, got an idea so what is our goal so our goal is to create a visualization that help us to understand the relationship between these features and species 
and next we need to create a statistical model that will help us uh, determine which is setosa which is virginia and which is um, versicolor uh, now what i will do is uh, i will open my r studio and before that i want to show you the data set so now i am here at iris data set so here you could see i'm inside the r documentation and uh, basically i'm inside uh, the their data set they provide in version 3.6.2 and in the topics iris so in this you could see the famous feature of andersons iris data set uh, set so it's uh, data, uh, data set from the fishers or andersons iris data set they might be the researcher who have created those data set the measurement in centimeter of the variable sepal length and width length and petal length and width length respectively for 50 flowers from each three species of iris the species are iris setosa versicolor and virginica and from this we total have data frame of 150 cases five variables sepal length sepal width petal width and petal width iris tree gave the same in the three dimensional uh, array of size 50 by 4 that we are going not going to look into three uh, and they have this the how to use the they have uh, they have like some example code but uh, we don't have to use that one which is not for all use what we are going to run, do is we are going to run the r studio so i am opening r studio and here i have opened my r studio and it says update available so i am going to say remind me later on basically uh, i don't want to update right now i will update it later on after this lecture so i will create a new script and if you uh, know the shortcut keys basically it's control shift n and i will save it to my uh, desktop and in the r project i will save it and basically name it r iris in which we are going to do the visualization so the first thing is we need to do is Uh, is to import those data set and to import those data set i already told you that this data set is already available so if you want to get this data set let us say name a name let us say ddos and uh, basically it's a flowering name condition variable and if we call data method and we name iris here you could see that iris data set is available and uh, here you could see the documentation this is famous iris data set given the measurement in centimeter and variable and basically if you will open uh, click f1 you will be redirected to the same page that i was on in the first thing that is similar to this page you will be redirected so here you get the uh, documentation for this and we are going to first import those data set and it should be in string so iris in double quote it should be in and once it's there let us save it and we have iris and it's in promise and we have got our data set so here here i have done some changes in the code uh, what basically happen is uh, in this if you get this error is basically saying that filter and lag package is getting conflict because they both have the same name uh, that's why they are getting some conflicts that uh, is mask co plot is getting mask from this object because they have the same method function inside those libraries basically both they have a same naming functions and that's why what we need to do is we uh, either we could handle those changes or we could leave it so basically we don't want to go deep dive into it and change those package name and uh, in the library but what we are going to do is now is we are going to do some visualization so what i am going to do is i am calling going to call uh, create a variable name that was which is basically iris data set name and we are going to uh, going to allocate that name to uh, going to provide that to the iris so if 
you look at the uh, exploration uh, and global environment tab you could see that my iris and dados have those both same variables and you could also see one of the uh, one of the be, be, uh, one of the advantages of uh, our studios compared to our uh, other console is that you could able to get inside the variable thing so you know that iris contains 150 observation and five variables and also you could look at that that which variable it is containing that gives you uh, you might be thinking okay so what's the benefit the benefit is that when you have some error right uh, you need to know okay which variable is holding which value and uh, we run debug a lot of time on to those when uh, if you are on uh, into programming you might know you might want to use debugger basically that gives you the uh, value of each variable but uh, at this uh, R studio you already have all those va uh, value variable and you could see okay which value it is holding so DDoS is holding 150 observation of 5 variables so I know that okay now the iris is containing the correct data that I need for the visualization now what I will do is basically run a head command get uh, let's say 6 basically uh, head is basically to uh, to get the data set what else the data set contains and uh, it's saying object uh, dado is not found it should be a container typo and here is the top 5 uh, of the data set and if you want more we could add 7 6 all those things and we get the uh, and you if you look on the console you will be able to see those value here now what I am going to do is basically I am going to uh, get the summary of this data set like what the values it contains and it's uh, generally in, uh, uh, in data visualization you want to know the summary of your data set it's the thumb rule like uh, you first see the data set okay what are the values it's holding what is this so like you could see that it's sepal length what it is sepal width it is what is petal length what is petal width and what is species it is and um, one advantage of uh, our studio is you directly could see it from here but anyhow uh, they, that's, that's a general rule in our uh, like if you are going to do some visualization in Kaggle uh, people always do this stuff first uh, to get idea about what data set it contains so summary and then this we need to provide the data set so we need to look out the data set and basically you get idea okay so the minimum length uh, the sepal uh, length you could see that it's 4.3 and uh, the max is 7.9 and for uh, sepal width you could see that the minimum is 2 and uh, the uh, one thing uh, uh, like I have already done the distribution so I will give you the spoilers first that the setosa have uh, lower sepal width length and height like petal width and petal length it have lower uh, kind of uh, uh, length like it have lower uh, sepal length sepal width lower petal length petal width compared to versicolor and virginica and versicolor next is the second most uh, in the uh, after then uh, we have lower uh, second lowest is pe uh, versicolor and then the highest one is petal length so you, uh, if you look at this the minimum I'm pretty sure that this might be coming from this setosa tablet and the max that is contributing most is coming from this virginica and then you have the median that where the most range lies in that is 1.3 the mean is uh, like the average is about 1.19 3.37 or uh, the uh, the petal uh, sepal length is also about uh, mean is about 5.83 and sepal width is about 3.057 it's better to check and try to uh, get an idea okay what the uh, what the uh, doc what this uh, visualization is trying to tell us now what we are going to do is we are going to do some ggplot and for those uh, we need to import our library that is ggplot uh, we are going to import ggplot2 so it's inside ggplot is inside the ggplot2 
now what we are going to do is we are going to create a histogram dot so let us see how we could create those so here i have already written down some codes and in the next of this code we are going to code together for sepal width and petal and petal width we are going to do it together but basically i want to give you what we have done so basically we created a sepal length uh, we created the ggplot method in this we need to provide first thing is the data we need to provide so we have provided our data to be dados then we did the mapping thing in which we called our x plot would be our uh, sepal length so this is our uh, if you look at this plot this is in the end this is our sepal length is our x axis we called a uh, geo histogram we then say at the length uh, histogram to consider bins to be 30 which is a uh, 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 directly a default value if you say uh, if we remove this it could always take 30 i suppose and so it's saying using bin 30 pick a better value with bin width and we have to add 30 basically it's saying we need to use so we have added bins 30 you could also play with it like how many bins you need to provide i usually play and love it like this is 10 bins how it would look like uh, but 30 is the correct way to denote and then what we have done is basically use the theme wsj which is black and uh, our background is black and our font of our title is little bit dark we provided a gg ta uh, title you could also provide uh, use xlab uh, to provide the x uh, heading there might some issue i don't know why but it's not showing the x title and then we have done what we have done is called plot grid basically it calls the uh, sepal length to show the plot now what you need to do is you need to give a try and try to attempt yourself for the sepal width petal length and petal width so in this uh, you could pause this video and try to attempt by yourself so what i will do is try to attempt by myself so what i will call is sepal then uh, we need to uh, i'm going to solve this so i hope you are able to do it if you have able to do it you could skip this part so basically ggplot and then we provide data this or the data would be ddos and then what we are going to do is mapping aesthetics x is equal to our sepal length sorry sepal width which are which is our the data value so if you look at the columns this is all which we are going to map for and the rest of the things are same pretty much same so geo histogram histogram and we are going to say bins 30 sorry bins bins 30 fill it with the red, red color fill it with red the outline color could be the black the size could be 1.3 as per all like then we need to define the alpha the alpha is basically the transparency which lies between uh, 1 to uh, sorry 0 to 1 and you could either keep keep it uh, 8, 9 but I think 0 0.87 are the best values for this Let's provide little bit transparency and uh, have better theme and if you are in very much hurry you could see your graph as well now because we have coded out that thing and now the rest of the thing would be just create all the plot grid method and provide our sepal width and here is our sepal width and what we could do is basically copy the theme uh, WSJ. Then what we need to do is we need to also copy this title labs. Either you could code it uh, like either you could write it down yourself or just copy paste. 
because the, both are the same thing that we need to do is uh, control z x labs to title and then sepal instead of sepal length we need to say it's for sepal width and sepal length histogram instead we need to correct it with, with sepal width histogram and save it and let's run it so here is our histogram for sepal length and sepal width and now what we could do is basically do for similarly for other and if you want to show it together like sepal length and sepal width we have got this uh, theme already and uh, you might be wondering why there is the difference in the theme because we forgot to add the plus uh, append method to uh, get the same theme now we have got our petal and petal width and you might uh, be able to see it here in much more clear way uh, the sepal length and petal width and here the sepal width is the 3.1 have largest range that lies into this and if you look at the for sepal length uh, the highest values range like uh, lies for uh, like lies about 7 but uh, we don't know, uh, don't need to like uh, have to always look into this we could also look into this and we could know that the most of the range lies in median and 5.8 range so if we look for sepal length uh, in the 5.8 range this would be the one 5.8 uh, range so most of the thing lies here and if we look at the mean uh, sorry so uh, so if we look at the mean and basically the thing issue uh, here is that, is that we are doing for all the thing for uh, Satosa, Varsinika and Virginica but that's why this variance is lying it's not exact 5.8 it lying before that and uh, after those as well so it's combination of those thing as well so 5.8 uh, uh, and then if you look at 3.7, 1.9 those are the median value range and uh, for sepal width you could see that 3.01 is the highest one that have most of the uh, values uh, lying in and I'm going to shorten this graph and basically I will check my clip my environment variable and what I will do is uh, I will create the rest of the plot and I will remove this plot grid method and do the same for plot uh, length. Uh, sorry petal length so what we need to do is similar thing just need to copy this code and do the same thing again and sepal length it's still beneath petal length and then what we could do is instead of sepal dot length we could do by petal dot length and pretty sure it's in uh, camel case sorry it's in the first is in cam uh, capital and then this should be this should be sepal all sepal should be petal and this is based on length so we don't need to change that part and petal length and in the last we need to call uh, last method that we uh, need to call this plot grid method which will have our graph plot grid and we pass the petal length and we save it and run it we get the petal length and we could see that most of the values lies around 0 to 1 range and other uh, this is most of the setosa and then the other are the virginica and was color so that makes sense and uh, if you not are able to plot by like get a clear idea why I am saying this that this lies in the setosa range once I will get into a multivariant plot we could plot each in different ways uh, what we are trying to do is going into the stepwise like first uh, the one plot all together then we do multivariant uh, sorry bivariant then multivariant plots so it will be easy for us to understand now what we could do is similarly for second we could 
do it for petal width. So instead of petal length, petal width, and here we could call petal width and instead petal length we could say petal width petal width is to gram and here petal length instead we could do petal uh, width petal sepal length sepal width and save it and we have got our four plots together if i just increase my screen width to just to show you how it looks like so here is petal length so we have looked this one so this one is new one uh, you could see there is some kind of breakage through that 0 to 0 0.03 uh, in petal with histogram uh, if my cursor is uh, like i hope this cursor is available to uh, are you able to see this but in pe petal with histogram plot in this fourth one uh, second one plot you could see uh, in the x axis it's there are like how much breakage is this like one two three four five six like some about six breakage so what if uh, we could see there is some uh, uh, like for each species there might be some uh, uh, criteria for each petal length and petal width so we will try to use and at the end we will create a statistical model so help you out help us out so these are the four model uh, like four data visualization plot together now what we are going to do is uh, a good method is uh, one of the best method i will suggest you is to change each plot color so i will leave up to you because it's very easy you just need to provide the color name and just need to change the color uh, thing so for each this color you need to change the color so i will do the rest one more and then you need to do for the other thing so you, maybe you could make it uh, red green blue yellow you could make those the primary colors would be complete so then. so this is uh, done so we have completed our sepal length and sepal width now let us look at uh, some density histogram plot what uh, that we are going to look at basically box block that is known as and try to interpret uh, something from it now let us look at the next plot that we are going to look at is sepal length and density plot which is density plot and the blocks plot and if you remember this line shows the mid uh, i'm just going to repeat through it basically the middle line shows the median the high lowest values the highest values and the range it lies in so that's the how the sepal uh, length is basically uh, this is the median lowest value the uh, highest values in that range and the uh, upper to most point are the lowest and the highest point it lies in so now we have looked at the sepal length uh, sepal length box plot now what we are going to do is we are going to see how to plot this so I have already wrote down this code and this would be a basic code and uh, next for the other two sepal length, sepal width, uh, petal length, petal width, uh, we are going to plot it. But th basically this code is a guide through how you could do this. So here what I have done is basically I have called ggplot and I have provided our data, ddos mapping aesthetics, sepal dot length, similarly to above. And instead of geom histogram, we have called geom density, and then we have called fill is equal to red color. Basically, fill the other inside our plot to be red color. Then we have used color black and the size to be 1.6. Alpha we use 0.7. I usually use between 0.7 to 0.8. Then the theme I have used is economics theme, the X lab. Uh, the X lab is basically the title. I have used sepal length and the GD title is uh, sepal length histogram. And uh, uh, this should be density plot histogram. Sorry. So, you yeah, just need to update those. 
then what next what we have done is basically called our sepal length box plot and we have said did the similar thing ggplot data ddos and mapping aesthetics in which sepal x is our length and then we have created our box plot fill it with red color color black basic and size 1.2 and the alpha is 0 0.7 similar to do above and to call the box plot we need to use the stack box plot method and here once we have used stack box plot method geom is equal to error bar like oh, what's the uh, geometry is and it's not necessary you need to call the uh, geom and if you run we basically get uh, the box plot without color so basically it is for our color and uh, the theme is economics theme x lab is our sepal length we have provided our title and then we have told or called a plot grid method to plot it so here is once we have plotted we could plot it for the rest of the thing that is sepal width sepal uh, width box plot petal length petal length box plot petal uh, width uh, petal width box plot so what we are going to do is we are going to do let's say uh, you try to attempt those three and if you have any issue you could uh, if you are able to solve it you could skip this part or you could watch it so what i'm going to do is code again this thing for other three so in this i'm going to go very fast because it's similar thing that we don't um, need to do much basically sepal length instead what we need to use is yes sepal width we need to use and uh, yeah sepal width is correct and then what we need to do is instead aesthetic x is equal to sepal dot length instead we call sepal dot width and then in this geometry density we fill it with red color we uh, have outlined black color size 1.6 alpha 0.7 and theme economist x lab is sepal length and we provide the title to it sepal it should be sepal width and then sepal width density is to ground and similarly for this we need to update this for sepal width and uh, or sepal width here to and sepal width box plot and then what we need to do is basically here also you need to update those by sepal width and box one is correct so let us run it and here you could see uh, the width in very much shorter range and for uh, width density you could see the in 3.0 uh, the highest density is there basically if we look at the density a sepal with histogram we could see there is a peak and which signifies that here is also the peak so most of the value in that range is the highest uh, lies in and in the density plot it's very much clear and this uh, if you look at this there are some outclass values that does not lies in this range that are shown by dots these three dot in box plot uh, here if i zoom in you might be able to see clearly so here is the value lies in the half range in the three point range. Now what we need to do is next for the petal width and petal length. Similarly for petal width and uh, petal width and petal length. So what I'm going to do is it's basically similar steps and uh, instead of sepal we need to do it for petal and this time we need to get the petal length. So I'll change the width to length and here uh, aesthetic is needs to be petal and our first uh, petal p should be capital it's in capital casing and petal uh, length spelling there is also a typo i have, uh, I have seen the typo in the starting variable and it's better to fix it first because later you might get some issues uh, because when you try to declare some variables and you see 
it's not uh, uh, that correct naming so it might be not a clean code uh, basically there are rules for clean code variable should be always in small casing camel casing should be followed for the functions and the variable needs should be in like uh, the data frame needs column needs to be in camel casing all those terms need to be followed but basically uh, which is uh, next in the uh, x lab we need to update the petal length and here also we need to update the petal length and here we also have to update it with the petal length and then here also we need to update it with the petal length length petal length and you might be wondering why to waste too much time on naming trust me when someone sees your code and sees too much uh, it, it will be not uh, other person sees your code and he sees this plot and if there is no naming right if there is no name for petal length petal width he might not able to understand those things so it's better to name it first than to name it last so sepal width sepal width so here we have a typo instead this needs to be a petal width so sorry uh, let me check once petal length petal length and here we need to show the instead of sepal width we need to show petal length and here you could see some trend that there is some local maxima and then there is minimum ma and then there is again maxima so if we look at the plot for petal length and this is true like here is some maxima and then there is minimum from there and this signifies there and here we could see most of the values lies before in the range of the median and then the most of the median values and the uh, rest of the values lies after the median like it could be 80 to 20 percent that thing could be now uh, you could do the similar thing for uh, petal width and to do for petal width it's similar thing and if you know how to do it you could skip this part basically it's just for your uh, sake that how I am pulling this petal width and economics petal density histogram petal and here petal width yeah naming needs to be updated so petal width petal density histogram that's correct uh, so here needs to be petal width and now let us save and see the what we are going to infer from this so okay so here we also need to update the uh, naming petal width and in the plot grid you need to update the variable that which needs it to be mapped so now it's correct and it's similar to petal length also like it's have some increase maximum and then minimum and petal width also follows the same thing uh, some high and lows and high and lows so that's what we are getting and the minimum lies around 1.5 below 1.5 might be 1.4 uh, if you look at 1.4 some somewhere here for petal width now we have got an idea okay how to create the histogram plots uh, what i need to do uh, challenge you next is to create the same plot similar to this where all fours are there there and i will give you the hint basically it's similar thing instead of box one you need to change the variable name for other variables to be box one two three four and you need to change the color and then you need to add all those variables here similar to the uh, or this plot grid method that way we have added so uh, i will show you the answer basically instead of 
uh, guiding you. Uh, so basically, here in sepal length, box one is there. Sepal width, box two, we could name. And uh, I'm leaving the color up to you. It's very uh, simple. I hope you are able to change it. Uh, box three, petal width, and here we have called box four. So now we just need to uh, do the similar thing, petal length and then box uh, petal length is box 3 oh uh, yeah yes box 3 and then uh, petal width is box 2 and petal length is box 1 so let us save it and run it we get all the plot and basically it's not looking too tidy uh, because we have lot less space but if we I increase those space you are able to get those so here you get all this plot petal width petal density plot petal density plot uh, and uh, I see here the typo in the density you could fix those and I will challenge you to change the color for each those plot to be same so petal density and this to be same so it's more intuitive that what lies with it now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have seen some there is some header variable is there I don't like uh, extra variable though that we haven't used so I will remove this and you don't need to worry about those now what we are going to do is use uh, if you remember this is uh, we will use multivariant plots to plot or uh, plots again so get an idea okay which values lies is where and by next plot you will be able to clear okay why I was saying in the start that it was size smaller than all other three then petal length uh, than other two so let us see in this next plot now it's time to build a model right so here I have wrote down some code which I will explain you that what we have done. So basically we have done is basically trying to predict the sepal length and we have created a linear model and in this we have provided sepal width, petal length, petal length, petal width, petal width species and data is equal to iris and I, uh, iris predicted sepal length is by uh, directly predicting the model. And then what we have done is, let me just run this code and it will take some time but uh, once we have done you could see the iris uh, we also uh, here you could see the predicted sepal length so if we look at predicted sepal length and petal length it's somewhat we close so it's 5.0 to 4.7 right so it's almost uh, exact let us see in graph like uh, how much it's close so let me just go through this again so if you look at sepal length 5.1 and predicted predicted sepal length is coming out to be 5.0 similarly the predicted uh, sepal length is 4.9 and predicted predicted sepal length is coming out to be 4.7 similarly 4.7 4.7 this is exactly correct 4.6 4.8 so th there is a sum off and on but it tries to predict nearest to the value and let us uh, show our actual versus uh, actual sepal length versus predicted sepal length so uh, here the line is the or uh, linear model that is our linear model and all the other thing are just the predicted sepal length so how do you create a linear model you just draw a straight line that connects all try to connect all so uh, whenever models try to do is basically it tries to uh, create a line that covers all those but in general you can't create a model that exactly defines the uh, correct value so what it does it gets the average value from here so its value is somewhere here for predictive some uh, some model have like you could see that some uh, predicted sepal length 
value is way down the line so uh, it averages out and draws those line and it try to fit those lines into the data set once they are done what we have done is ggplot iris that we have uh, then what we are doing is aesthetics x is our actual sepal length y is our predicted sepal length that we have created the colors are species based on that and then geometric species which is point size that three species are there so that we are doing it and we are drawing a line based on this dashed line uh, and then we add actual sepal length we add y predicted length we created minimal theme and added plot title and created our graph now here we have looked on to the how you create a predicted actual sepal length and uh, act, uh, predict actual sepal length and predicted sepal length now with this end of this project i want to congratulate you all that you have come so far i hope you are able to now understand how data visualization works and you are able to create some beautiful graphs and you could tag us in the group uh, in the like in our channel that what plot you have created and i'm so proud that you have come so far uh, and learned so much in this uh, in this course uh, this is uh, one bit of the course the yeah, next bit of our course is also there so next is our sql and then after this we go on to the ai ml and after this you will truly master the data science in python and r so with this i will see you on to the next part of this course that is sql with this i abhijit sign off